Question 1. What is the maximum allowable time for cooling food from 135 degree Fahrenheit to 70 degree Fahrenheit? A. 1 hour B. 2 hours C. 4 hours D. 6 hours Answer. B. 2 hours. The maximum allowable time for cooling food from 135 degree Fahrenheit to 70 degree Fahrenheit is 2 hours, as part of the overall 6-hour cooling requirement to reach 41 degree Fahrenheit or lower. Question 2. Which foodborne pathogen is most commonly associated with undercooked poultry? A. E. coli B. Salmonella C. Norovirus D. Listeria Answer. B. Salmonella. Salmonella is the foodborne pathogen most commonly associated with undercooked poultry. Question 3. Name a toxin-producing bacteria that can grow in anaerobic conditions like canned food. A. Clostridium botulinum. B. Salmonella. C. E. coli. D. Staphylococcus aureus. Answer. A. Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium botulinum is a toxin-producing bacteria that can grow in anaerobic conditions, like those found in improperly canned food. Question 4. How long should hands be scrubbed with soap during hand washing? A. 5 seconds. B. 10 seconds. C. 15 seconds. D. 20 seconds. Answer. D. 20 seconds. Hands should be scrubbed with soap for at least 20 seconds during hand washing to effectively remove germs and contaminants. Question 5. What is the primary symptom of a norovirus infection? A. Sore throat. B. Diarrhea. C. Rash. D. Fever. Answer. B. Diarrhea. The primary symptom of a norovirus infection is diarrhea, often accompanied by vomiting. Question 6. In HACCP plan, what is a critical control point? CCP. A. A point where hazards can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. B. The final step in the food preparation process. C. The point where food is served to customers. D. The initial step in receiving raw materials. Answer. A. A point where hazards can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. A critical control point. CCP in HACCP plan is a stage where control can be applied to prevent, eliminate, or reduce food safety hazards to safe levels. Question 7. Which food item is considered a TCS food? Time slash temperature control for safety. A. Saltine crackers. B. Uncooked rice. C. Sliced melons. D. Olive oil. Answer. C. Sliced melons. Sliced melons are considered a TCS food, as they require time and temperature control for safety. Question 8. What temperature must ground beef reach to be considered safe for consumption? A. 145 degree Fahrenheit. 63 degree Celsius. B. 155 degree Fahrenheit. 68 degrees Celsius. C. 160 degree Fahrenheit. 71 degrees Celsius. D. 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degrees Celsius. Answer. C. 160 degree Fahrenheit. 71 degrees Celsius. Ground beef must reach an internal temperature of 160 degree Fahrenheit. 71 degrees Celsius to be considered safe for consumption, as this temperature is sufficient to kill harmful bacteria. Question 9. How should a chlorine-based sanitizer solution be tested for effectiveness? A. By checking the color. B. Using a thermometer. C. Using a phage test strip. D. Using a sanitizer test strip. Answer. D. Using a sanitizer test strip. The effectiveness of a chlorine-based sanitizer solution should be tested using a sanitizer test strip to ensure it has the proper concentration. Question 10. What is the recommended sanitizer concentration for iodine sanitizers? A. 12.5 to 25 ppm. B. 
50 to 100 ppm. C. 75 to 200 ppm. D. 200 to 400 ppm. Answer. C. 75 to 200 ppm. The recommended sanitizer concentration for iodine sanitizers is typically between 75 and 200 parts per million ppm. Question 11. At what internal temperature should lasagna be reheated for hot holding? A. 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius. B. 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. C. 155 degree Fahrenheit, 68 degree Celsius. D. 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. Answer, D, 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. Lasagna should be reheated to an internal temperature of 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degree Celsius for hot holding to ensure it is safe to eat. Question 12, name two common symptoms of Staphylococcus aureus food poisoning. A, diarrhea and fever. B, nausea and vomiting. C, headache and blurred vision. D, rash and sore throat. Answer, B, nausea and vomiting. Two common symptoms of Staphylococcus aureus food poisoning are nausea and vomiting. Question 13. What is the first step to take when a foodborne illness outbreak is suspected? A. Close the restaurant immediately. B. Notify the local regulatory authority. C. Interview sick customers. D. Discard all food items. Answer. B. Notify the local regulatory authority. The first step when a foodborne illness outbreak is suspected is to notify the local regulatory authority for guidance and investigation. Question 14. What is the primary reason for food handlers to avoid working when they have diarrhea or vomiting? A. To prevent dehydration. B. To avoid spreading foodborne pathogens. C. To comply with labor laws. D. To rest and recover. Answer B. To avoid spreading foodborne pathogens. Food handlers should avoid working when they have diarrhea or vomiting to prevent the spread of foodborne pathogens to others through food contamination. Question 15. How often must a food safety manager certification be renewed? A. Every year. B. Every three years. C. Every five years. D. It does not need to be renewed. Answer. C. Every five years, a food safety manager certification must typically be renewed every five years to ensure they are up to date with current food safety standards and practices. Question 16. In what order should raw meat, poultry, seafood, and ready-to-eat foods be stored in a refrigerator? A. Poultry, seafood, meat, ready-to-eat foods. B. Ready-to-eat foods, seafood, meat, poultry. C. Meat, poultry, seafood, ready-to-eat foods. D. Seafood, meat, poultry, ready-to-eat foods. Answer. B. Ready-to-eat foods, seafood, meat, poultry, ready-to-eat foods should be stored above all raw items, with seafood, meat, and poultry stored below in that order to prevent cross-contamination. Question 17. Which agency is primarily responsible for inspecting and grading meats? A. Food and Drug Administration, FDA. B. United States Department of Agriculture, USDA. C. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. D. National Restaurant Association, NRA. Answer. B. United States Department of Agriculture, USDA. The USDA is primarily responsible for inspecting and grading meats in the United States. Question 18. What is cross-contact in the context of allergen management? A. The transfer of pathogens from one food to another. B. The transfer of allergens from food containing an allergen to another food. C. Direct contact with allergenic food. D. The contamination of food with non-food allergens. 
Answer B. The transfer of allergens from food containing an allergen to another food. Cross-contact in allergen management refers to the transfer of allergens from food containing an allergen to another food, potentially causing allergic reactions. Question 19. What should be the minimum temperature for washing dishes in a high-temperature dishwashing machine? A. 140 degree Fahrenheit, 60 degree Celsius. B. 155 degree Fahrenheit, 68 degree Celsius. C. 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. D. 180 degree Fahrenheit, 82 degree Celsius. Answer. D. 180 degree Fahrenheit, 82 degree Celsius. The minimum temperature for washing dishes in a high temperature dishwashing machine should be 180 degree Fahrenheit, 82 degree Celsius, to effectively sanitize dishes. Question 20. What is the main purpose of a time temperature indicator, TTI, on a food package? A. To show if the food is cooked to the right temperature. B. To indicate if the food has been stored at the correct temperature over time. C to display the expiration date. D, to measure the thief level of the food. Answer, B, to indicate if the food has been stored at the correct temperature over time. A time temperature indicator on a food package is used to indicate whether the food has been kept at the appropriate temperature throughout its storage and transportation. Question 21, how frequently should food contact surfaces be cleaned and sanitized? A after each use, B, once a day, C, every four hours during continual use, D, only when visibly dirty. Answer, A, after each use. Food contact surfaces should be cleaned and sanitized after each use to prevent cross-contamination. Question 22. What is the best method for thawing frozen meat? A, on the countertop at room temperature, B, under cold running water, C, in microwave oven, D, in the refrigerator. Answer, D, in the refrigerator. The best method for thawing frozen meat is in the refrigerator, which allows for slow, safe thawing. Question 23, which foodborne illness can be prevented by avoiding cross-contact between raw and cooked food? A, botulism, B, salmonellosis, C, norovirus, D, Hepatitis A. Answer. B. Salmonellosis. Salmonellosis, caused by Salmonella bacteria, can be prevented by avoiding cross contact between raw and cooked food, as it is commonly associated with raw meat and poultry. Question 24. What is the danger of using copper utensils for acidic foods? A. Copper can react with acids and leach into food, causing illness. B. Acidic foods can corrode copper utensils and spoil the food. C. Copper enhances the acidity of food, altering its flavor. D. Copper makes acidic foods less palatable. Answer. A. Copper can react with acids and leach into food, causing illness. Using copper utensils for acidic foods is dangerous because copper can react with the acid and leach into the food, potentially causing illness. Question 25. Define the term foodborne intoxication. A. An illness caused by consuming food contaminated with pathogens. B. An allergic reaction to certain types of food. C. Illness caused by toxins produced by pathogens in the food. D. Discomfort caused by overeating or consuming spoiled food. Answer. C. Illness caused by toxins produced by pathogens in the food. Foodborne intoxication is an illness caused by consuming toxins produced by pathogens in the food as opposed to infection from the pathogens themselves. Question 26. At what minimum temperature should hot TCS food be held? A. 130 degree Fahrenheit, 54 degree Celsius. B. 135 degree Fahrenheit. 57 degree Celsius. C. 140 degree Fahrenheit. 60 degree Celsius. D. 
145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. Answer B, 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius, hot TCS, time slash temperature control for safety. Food should be held at a minimum temperature of 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius, to prevent the growth of harmful bacteria. Question 27. What is an example of a physical contaminant in food? A. Bacteria. B. Viruses. C. Metal shavings. D. Toxins. Answer. C. Metal shavings. Metal shavings are an example of a physical contaminant in food, which can cause injury or illness if ingested. Question 28. Describe the FIFO method in food storage. A. First in, first out, using older stock before newer stock. B. First in, first out, using newer stock before older stock. C. Last in, first out, using the most recently received items first. D. Randomly using stock regardless of when it was received. Answer. A. First in, first out, using older stock before newer stock. The FIFO, first in, first out, method in food storage involves using the older stock before the newer stock to ensure proper stock rotation and minimize waste. Question 29. What is the primary cause of botulism in food service? A. Improper cooking temperatures. B. Cross-contamination between raw and cooked foods. C. Inadequate cooling and reheating of food. D. Improperly canned or vacuum-packed foods. Answer. D. Improperly canned or vacuum-packed foods. The primary cause of botulism in food service is improperly canned or vacuum-packed foods, which create anaerobic conditions conducive to the growth of Clostridium botulinum. Question 30. How should chemicals be properly stored in a food service operation? A. Alongside food items for easy access. B. In a designated area away from food. C. In the same area as cleaning equipment. D. On high shelves above food preparation areas. Answer. B. In a designated area away from food, chemicals should be properly stored in a designated area away from food to prevent contamination and ensure food safety. Question 31. What is the correct action to take when receiving a delivery of frozen food with ice crystals? A. Accept it as it indicates the food was kept frozen. B. Refuse the delivery as it indicates thawing and refreezing. C. Store it immediately in the freezer to refreeze the crystals. D. Cook the food immediately to prevent further spoilage. Answer. B. Refuse the delivery as it indicates thawing and refreezing. Ice crystals on frozen food can indicate that the food has thawed and been refrozen, which can compromise its safety and quality. Question 32. Define potentially hazardous food in terms of food safety. A. Foods that require time and temperature control to prevent pathogen growth. B. Foods that are high in protein and low in carbohydrates. C. Non-perishable foods that can be stored at room temperature. D. Foods that contain only plant-based ingredients. Answer. A. Foods that require time and temperature control to prevent pathogen growth. Potentially hazardous foods are those that require proper time and temperature control to prevent the growth of pathogens or the formation of toxins. Question 33. What is the recommended procedure for handling a customer's report of a foreign object in their food? A. Apologize and offer a discount. B. Remove the object and serve the food to another customer. C. Investigate the issue, document it, and take corrective action. D. Blame the supplier or manufacturer of the food product. Answer. C. Investigate the issue, document it, and take corrective action. When a customer reports a foreign object in their food, the proper procedure is to investigate the issue, document it, and take corrective action to prevent future occurrences. Question 34. What temperature range defines the danger zone for bacterial growth in food? A. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 70 degree Fahrenheit. 
0 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. B. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit. 5 degrees Celsius to 57 degrees Celsius. C. 45 degree Fahrenheit to 120 degree Fahrenheit. 7 degrees Celsius to 49 degrees Celsius. D. 50 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit. 10 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. Answer. B. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit. 5 degrees Celsius to 57 degrees Celsius. The danger zone for bacterial growth in food is between 41 degree Fahrenheit and 135 degree Fahrenheit. Within this range, bacteria can grow rapidly, increasing the risk of foodborne illness. Question 35. How long can ready-to-eat TCS food be stored in a refrigerator before it becomes unsafe? A. 24 hours. B. 3 days. C. 7 days. D. 14 days. Answer. C. 7 days. Ready-to-eat time slash temperature control for safety. TCS. Food can be safely stored in a refrigerator for up to 7 days. Question 36. What are the critical factors for the growth of bacteria in food? A. Light, air, and carbon dioxide. B. Moisture, nutrients, and temperature. C. Acid, time, and oxygen. D. Salt, sugar, and fat content. Answer. B. Moisture, nutrients, and temperature. The critical factors for the growth of bacteria in food include moisture, nutrients, and temperature. These factors determine how rapidly bacteria can multiply in food. Question 37. What is the difference between cleaning and sanitizing? A. Cleaning removes dirt. Sanitizing reduces pathogens to safe levels. B. Cleaning uses chemicals. Sanitizing uses heat. C. There is no difference. They are the same. D. Cleaning is for equipment. Sanitizing is for hands. Answer. A. Cleaning removes dirt. Sanitizing reduces pathogens to safe levels. Cleaning involves removing dirt and debris from surfaces, while sanitizing involves using chemicals or heat to reduce the number of pathogens on a surface to safe levels. Question 38. How should a food handler with an infected wound on their hand proceed? A. Cover the wound with a bandage and a glove before handling food. B. Wash the wound with soap and continue working. C. Stop working and seek medical attention. D. Only work with packaged food items. Answer. A. Cover the wound with a bandage and a glove before handling food. A food handler with an infected wound on their hand should cover the wound with a bandage and wear a glove before handling food to prevent contamination. Question 39. What are the requirements for a successful pest control program in a restaurant? A. Regular use of insecticides and rodenticides. B. Keeping doors and windows open for ventilation. C. Denying pests access to food, water, and shelter. D having a cat in the restaurant. Answer. C. Denying pests access to food, water, and shelter. A successful pest control program in a restaurant involves denying pests access to food, water, and shelter, and using preventive measures like sealing cracks and maintaining cleanliness. Question 40. What steps should be taken if a sanitizer's concentration is too low in a three-compartment sink? A. Continue using it as some sanitizer is better than none. B. Add more water to dilute it further. C. Adjust the concentration to the proper level according to the manufacturer's instructions. D. Use soap instead of sanitizer. Answer. C. Adjust the concentration to the proper level according to the manufacturer's instructions. If the sanitizer concentration is too low in a three-compartment sink, the concentration should be adjusted to the proper level as per the manufacturer's instructions to ensure effectiveness. Question 41. How can a restaurant reduce the risk of salmonella contamination? A. By cooking all foods to high temperatures. B. By using only pre-packaged foods. C. 
by washing hands and surfaces frequently and cooking poultry and eggs thoroughly. D. By serving only vegetarian dishes. Answer. C. By washing hands and surfaces frequently and cooking poultry and eggs thoroughly. Reducing the risk of salmonella contamination involves maintaining good hygiene, including frequent hand washing and surface cleaning, and ensuring poultry and eggs are cooked thoroughly. Question 42. What is the proper procedure for using gloves in food preparation? A. Reuse gloves to handle different types of food. B. Wash and sanitize gloves between tasks. C. Change gloves between tasks and when they become soiled or torn. D. Gloves are not necessary if hands are washed. Answer. C. Change gloves between tasks and when they become soiled or torn. The proper procedure for using gloves in food preparation is to change them between different tasks and when they become soiled or torn to prevent cross-contamination. Question 43. What food safety risks are associated with vacuum-packed and sous-vide foods? A. Increased risk of freezer burn. B. Enhanced flavor profiles that mask spoilage. C. Risk of botulism due to anaerobic conditions. D. Faster spoilage due to lack of preservatives. Answer. C. Risk of botulism due to anaerobic conditions. Vacuum-packed and sous-vide foods present a risk of botulism because the anaerobic conditions created in vacuum sealing can promote the growth of Clostridium botulinum. Question 44. How can time temperature abuse occur during food delivery? A. By delivering food in non-insulated containers. B by speeding up delivery times. C, by using digital temperature monitoring. D, by delivering food only during cooler hours. Answer, A, by delivering food in non-insulated containers. Time temperature abuse during food delivery can occur if the food is not kept in insulated containers, allowing it to enter the temperature danger zone where pathogens can grow. Question 45. What is the minimum internal cooking temperature for eggs that will be served immediately? A. 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. B. 155 degree Fahrenheit, 68 degree Celsius. C. 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. D. 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius. Answer. A. 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. The minimum internal cooking temperature for eggs that will be served immediately is 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. Question 46. How should a manager address an employee's failure to adhere to food safety practices? A. Ignore it as long as no one gets sick. B. Provide additional training and monitor the employee's practices. C. Immediately terminate the employee. D. Give a verbal warning and then ignore. Answer. B. Provide additional training and monitor the employee's practices. A manager should address an employee's failure to adhere to food safety practices by providing additional training and closely monitoring the employee to ensure compliance. Question 47. What is the significance of sell-by and use-by dates on food products? A. They are only suggestions and can be ignored. B. Sell-by dates indicate when a product should be sold, and use-by dates indicate when it should be consumed. C. They are legally binding dates for discarding food. D. They indicate the peak quality of the product, not safety. Answer. B. Sell-by dates indicate when a product should be sold, and use-by dates indicate when it should be consumed. These dates are important for managing inventory and ensuring food is used when it is safest and of the best quality. Question 48. Describe the process of dry storage and its importance in food safety. A. Storing food in a moist environment to prevent drying out. B. Keeping food in a cool, dry, and well-ventilated area to prevent spoilage. C. Storing food at room temperature regardless of packaging. D. Using dehydrators to store all types of food. 
Answer. B. Keeping food in a cool, dry, and well-ventilated area to prevent spoilage. Dry storage involves storing food in a cool, dry, and well-ventilated area, which is crucial for preventing spoilage and contamination, especially for non-perishable items. Question 49. What are the consequences of not having an adequate hand-washing station? A. Increased risk of foodborne illness due to potential contamination. B. Slower food preparation processes. C. Higher water and soap usage. D. Decreased customer satisfaction. Answer. A. Increased risk of foodborne illness due to potential contamination. Not having an adequate hand washing station can lead to an increased risk of foodborne illness as it hampers proper hand hygiene practices, a critical aspect of preventing contamination. Question 50. How should a restaurant handle a food recall notification for a product in its inventory? A. Continue using the product until a substitute is found. B. Sell the product at a discount to quickly deplete stock. C. Remove the product from inventory and follow the recall instructions. D. Donate the product to minimize losses. Answer. C. Remove the product from inventory and follow the recall instructions. Upon receiving a food recall notification, a restaurant should immediately remove the affected product from its inventory and follow the specific recall instructions to ensure safety.